Hi, this is Tim Lightfellow in the Kingdom of Ontario in the Society for Creative Anachronism. Uh, today's video is an interesting topic to consider on my part. Um, someone presented the idea of how do you get the most out of archery practice? There are a lot of factors, so I hope I can do this justice. Um, there are probably as many things and approaches as there are archers, so uh, I'm going to, some of it's going to be general kind of topic discussion, but then I'm going to try to give a few specific examples that maybe will help someone kind of pick apart some things to be able to kind of narrow down okay how do i pick a thing to work on or uh, something like that so hopefully this will be helpful um, certainly an interesting topic this is my second attempt at the video i did one and i just felt like it didn't have enough detail and so i'm doing this second attempt to hopefully uh get more information into the video uh, for you. So the first thing to consider, um, as I recall, the person who suggested the topic kind of mentioned two pieces to it, the physical aspect, like workout, uh, building endurance, that type of part, how do you get that out of it? And then the other being archery, like how do you, um, get the most out of the time you have to shoot uh, at your practice, whether that's, you know, in, with a, an eye towards improving your, your scores, your shooting, uh, your consistency, that sort of thing. So the first part then, the uh, endurance and, and uh, you know, strength, that type of thing, frankly, most SCA practices seem like they're only a couple hours long, maybe three hours long if you're lucky, um, maybe once a week, maybe twice a week if you're lucky. And what we tend to see is the archers that have had the most success are the ones who have shot and worked on stuff outside of practice as well. So when it comes to physical, you're probably going to be doing do better if you have a way to, uh, for instance, keep a bow strung up or string it up every day, every other day, and um, just you know have a spot in your house where you can just pull it a certain number of times every day, every other day. It just helps to work on the strength. You know, pull it, hold it a moment, let it back down. Just that'll work on the strength, that'll work on getting used to the idea of holding it at your anchor point instead of just draw there and let go fast, uh, which is an issue some people have when shooting. So it can work on a couple different aspects of your shooting by doing this. Um, working with a trainer, if you go to the gym uh, sp for some archery specific strengthening exercises, um, things like that. So it seems like for the most part, a lot of the strength aspect feels like you need to work on it more outside of practice than you do during. Um, things you can do if you want to work more on endurance than strength is if you have the option, um, switch to a little bit lighter bow, shoot longer. Uh, because that'll help with the endurance piece. Uh, heavier bows obviously work more on the strength piece, but you may not be able to shoot them as long. Maybe you can shoot two scoring rounds with a heavier bow and shoot the entire practice with the lighter bow. So, uh, and maybe you want to mix it up. Maybe you do one one practice, one the next practice, so you kind of work a bit on strength and a bit on endurance. Um, that's really the main thing I can think of on that. Um, we're blessed. I know in the branches around our area, um, 
most of them do two hour practices. We do uh, three and that gives us a little more time because uh, especially like after the lockdown, shoot for an hour and a half or so and it's just, you know, start feeling that tiredness starting to kick in. So having that longer, the three hour practice and trying to shoot as much of that as I can every week. Um, I've got my endurance built back up some. We'll see tomorrow uh, how much because we'll be shooting New York, which is 24 ends. So that'll be fun. Um, as far as the um, other side, the just shooting skills, uh, consistency, how do you get the most out of practice? So this is an interesting one. This one is one I've really been thinking about since I did the first attempt at this video and trying to think through and piece, you know, kind of puzzle out what topics, what, what really does this look like? So first off, we have to acknowledge that everyone's um, goals are different. So we have some people at our range that their goal is to show up to practice and shoot. I mean, literally, the act of getting to come to practice and shoot is their entire goal. Um, okay, so um, for them, they're not going to be focused on a specific skill or anything like that. They're going to come out, shoot, have fun, and at the end of practice, go home. Um, you have other people, maybe their goal is achieving a certain average. Maybe their goal is getting scores in multiple categories instead of just one. Uh, put a caveat in here. I know that some kingdoms only have one or two categories. Uh, on tier has open, longbow, crossbow, period recurve, period longbow, period crossbow, and then York handbow and York crossbow. So we have had some people who have literally their goal and they achieved it was to get a top 10 medallion in all eight categories. So perhaps you have something like that. You want to shoot uh, longbow and period longbow. You want to shoot uh, open recurve and period recurve. Uh, so there can be different goals and based on those goals, you're going to have different ways you approach this. Um, for me, one of the things that I found interesting is that most of the time when I go to practice, it's all about just shooting all the practice and trying to get a good score to submit while I'm there. Um, in the past, um, so to give you uh, those who are watching this an idea um, I've made ludicrous bowman in period crossbow and I've made grandmaster in open crossbow and so what that looks like scores wise is 120 or higher average for period crossbow and a 100 to 119.7 average for open crossbow um, so at that point when you're achieving scores like that, you're pretty comfortable with what you're doing. You're pretty comfortable usually with aim points. Your goals might be more related to, I just changed out a prod. I want to figure out the new aim points with the new prod. Uh, I'm testing out different bolts, different lengths, different weights, different tip weights, whatever it is. So your goal may literally be, I'm working on something just for this practice. Or maybe it's, the, you know, the next couple practices because I'm changing something and I'm trying to see how that impacts what I'm doing. And if I can be consistent, if I can be more consistent. Um, whereas if your scores are, you know, for those who tend to shoot 
explore that, you may be working more on something specific to improve your form, to um, maybe you're working on aiming. Uh, so you might have a specific kind of thing or a specific um, kind of aspect of what you're doing that you want to work on to, to improve. So sometimes the challenge here is um, maybe you're kind of new to archery or you've been shooting a little while, but it maybe it, it's just you. Maybe, you know, single person or you don't have a, a partner spouse, maybe um, you do, but they're not involved. So you don't have a mentor, maybe a, tra a teacher, um, you know, things like that. So, a situation where it's really just you, it can be harder to kind of tease out um, what piece might you might want to work on unless you know someone's mentioned something at a practice or an event that hey I notice you doing this thing um, one tool that I think could probably be used more uh, at least in our region I, I can't speak to others but uh, there was one point where I was struggling a bit on timed ends and this was I don't think I had made Master Bowman yet, so I was trying to I was trying to work my way up to getting scores in the 80s, um, and it's just it's like, why is it at my timed ends they start out with a good shot and then it seems like I would keep my shots would keep falling lower and lower and it's like what am I doing? So uh, the tool I finally had someone record what I was doing. It's like, just stand there with the camera, with the phone, record me shooting, let me watch it. Because then I have a tool that I can use to look at and say, okay, oh, I'm doing this thing. And in the case of that, what I figured out I was doing is I was releasing, but I was in such a hurry to reset the crossbow for the next shot, it was literally as soon as the trigger pulled or as the trigger was finishing, I was starting to drop the front end of the crossbow down to swing it down to set it for the next shot. So it can be something as simple as that, that you look and go, oh, I need to work on that. Um, it can be something that you're looking and going, okay, I, I feel like what I'm seeing is consistent in every shot, you know, ask someone else on the range a proficient archer hey do you see something here that i'm doing that i could be doing a little differently that might improve consistency um so having a tool like that someone watching you uh, getting you know someone recording you so you can look at it yourself something like that can help you to pinpoint what thing you want to work on and help you set those goals um, as far as what to work on at practice. Uh, some other things, you know, some common form things is uh, elbow. So typically for handbow, you want your elbow on your string arm to be straight back. And you want the shoulders to be what's engaging and doing most of the work. So maybe if you realize you're putting your arm up all the time, you that's something to work on. Maybe you're putting your arm down all the time. That's something you may want to work on. Um, release is feeling a little weird. Again, sometimes recording can help figure out why. Maybe you're slightly plucking as you release. Maybe, um, as I saw someone doing practice today at one shot, they actually kind of brought their hand forward as they released. So they were actually letting the string off a bit, which of course meant it shot dropped because it didn't have as much uh, power behind it. Um, so anything like that, um, anything you can pick out can give you a point of focus for a practice to work on to improve your form. 
most of what we are usually trained to do in practice is work on something specific like that uh, or like me trying to today I was trying to figure out how well my crossbow is trained and uh, figure out consistency for the York shoot and endurance for the York shoot but um, having something like that that you can focus on that can help you along your journey um, helps a lot um, maybe it's your stance uh, maybe you're twisting your hips. Maybe you're always putting your weight a little to one side or the other. And some of these things can be a form issue, uh, meaning it can be just that you're doing it and maybe you don't realize it, uh, which again, the video or someone else watching you can help with. Maybe it's um, strength related and it gives you something that you look at and say oh okay so I need to work on leg strength core strength arm strength whichever it is uh, to be able to correct that part of the form so you know the, the two things can most definitely tie together between strength and uh, consistency in that um, it often helps for those people who have some sort of mentors or teacher um, we try usually in our branch we try to have the same teacher work with the new students uh, when the, each time they show up because then they have that consistency and uh, teaching style and help them you know achieve uh, a little bit better consistency as they start their archery journey and hopefully they enjoy it and continue um, we have in on tier the grant level uh, archery thrown weapons missile award is actually a polling order and so for those of us who are members we're allowed to, we uh, can take students much the same way as a knight can take a squire and um, forgive me, I don't know the new names. The uh, Master of Defense might still be a cadet. Anyway, so much in the same way they can take students, we also will take students. And so having having someone who's a teacher or mentor in that kind of role who's trying to help you with your archery, they can sometimes work with you and come up with a plan of, you know, work on this uh, at practice because this is one of the keys to getting your consistency better uh, so having that actual feedback can help so that you aren't having to try and assess what you're doing yourself and and figure things out uh, as you're able um, I just had another thought about that and I think it's gone now it's the fun of doing live video. Um, I don't edit my videos because I want it to be more conversational. I don't want it to be a, a you know, professional piece together, edited together piece. So uh, sometimes I lose track of what I was thinking. Uh, anyway, so uh, working with the teacher or mentor, having some other skilled archer watch you shoot or record so you can watch yourself. Uh, to come up with things that can help you having a specific short-term or long-term goal whether again maybe it's achieving a certain average maybe it's you want to build up your endurance to shoot a cloud a york uh, to be able to shoot half the day at an event all day at an event um, maybe you're working towards competing in tournaments uh, any of these types of goals can help um can can help guide you during practice as far as what you want to do um what you want to focus on um trying to think if there's anything else i can come up with um we discussed strength strength and, and or endurance ideas uh discuss some some archery stuff with a few specifics things you might work on like consistent anchor points uh, 
consistent stance, making sure your elbow's in the right place, um, things like that. Uh, some of that comes down to what form works for you and what doesn't. I, I mean, I've seen people that have their, in fact, I, it seems to me when I was shooting handbow, my elbow was up a bit. It wasn't, you know, way up here, but it was up a bit compared to what you would, what they generally want or call consider good form. But as long as I did it the same every time and shooting results were good, uh, not an issue. So, um, remember that along along with this that quote unquote perfect form is a concept and it's going to be a little different for each person and what their body is and what their strengths like and all of that stuff so if someone does have advice like oh try you know, changing the your elbow position, try changing your, your leg position, try. Um, remember that um, you know you better than any of the rest of us know you. And if what you're doing is what you have to do to have the strength and the ability to shoot, and it's working for you and you can do it the same way consistently, that's the important part. So I hope this helps. I hope this might assist people who are kind of looking for ideas, um, looking for little tidbits or things that might help them figure out what to work on at practice that can hopefully help with consistency. Thank you for watching another video. Have a good day.